In this demonstration, I'll show you how to find the antiderivative of a function. The example shown in this video will be slightly more complicated than those found in part one. Now, as discussed in part one, an antiderivative is a function whose derivative is the original function. In other words, it is a function that reverses what the derivative does. To deal with these more complicated functions, I have included a table of useful antiderivatives. In question number one, they ask us to find the antiderivative of 5 times sine x plus 2 times x to the power of negative half. Now this one is simple because we did examples like these in part one. But 5 sine x, you'll need to use the fact that the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. Notice that all of these functions have a tiny f. Now that tiny f represents that this is the antiderivative, and the big F represents the function. So to find the function, we're going to use the big F, and we know that the antiderivative of sine x is equal to negative cosine x. So our answer becomes negative cosine x. That represents the first term. And the second term is easy. You increase this by 1, and then you take that number, and you put it underneath the denominator. So let's do that. Let's increase negative half by 1, which gives us positive half. 2x, 1 over 2, and notice that's positive. And we're going to take this number now and put it underneath. Now don't forget that plus sign. This leads us to x half. Now of course, some teachers might not like the fact that you're using a half as an exponent, so you can change that into a radical, and that will be fine as well. Also keep in mind the extension of plus c. Because you never know, there might have been a constant there, and so we use this plus c to, den to denote that possibility. Here they're asking us to find the, der the antiderivative of this function, 7 secant x times tangent x plus a quarter times x to the power of negative 6. This is the easy part. This one right here is more complicated, so we're going to use our list. Secant x, 10x, gives us secant x. So... We have 7 secant x, and this part right here, we're going to increase that by 1, giving us negative 5. We're going to take that negative 5 and multiply it by 4, because we're going to put it in the denominator position where the 4 is, and so we end up with negative 1 over 20. Now don't forget the plus c. You'll need to get used to that. Let's move on to question number 3. In this question, we have 8 over x minus this term. Now keep in mind, in our list, that when you have 1 over x, you use the ln of the absolute of x. So we'll do the same thing. This becomes 8 ln absolute x. And of course, we can do the same thing for this. If you take a look, if you have 1 over this term, it becomes the inverse of sine x. Recall that the derivative of sine inverse of x is equal to that. So we're going to use this minus 3 sine inverse of x plus c. We're going to give that a capital F as well. Let's proceed. Now in this case, you can easily get confused here, but recall that in algebra, this denominator can be given to both of those terms above. So you end up with x squared over the square root of x plus 3x over the square root of x. Now that being said, we can change this into exponential form, like so, x to the power of half. And we can change this format so that it looks like this, x squared times x to the power of negative half, and similarly, 3x times x to the power of negative half. We can add these up, and we end up with x to the power of 3 over 2. And here we end up with this, in particular, becomes, well, let's add 1 to that. And we end up with 5 over 2x and then this 5 over 2 goes to the bottom, and I'm going to skip a step here, so you end up with 2 over 5. And similarly, that becomes 1.5, which is equal to 3 over 2. 
So we end up with 3x, 3 over 2, and then we're going to put 3 over 2 at the bottom. If we do that, don't get confused here, it becomes 6 over 3, which is equal to 2, and then plus c. So there you have it. Four more examples of antiderivatives being found. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.